Mauna Loa, deep 3.1 magnitude earthquake struck today, and Kilauea, 2.6 at Pahala at a 37 kilometer depth, which is right at the beginning of the mantle plume. And this is the upcoming diagram, the cross section of it, as you can see here. It starts around 40 to 50 kilometers down the melt rock, and that's heading towards the mantle plume, as you see there. These Pahala earthquakes have been going on at a tremendous rate, and they're all deep, all of them. Something is happening there. Now, we know that uh, according to Volcano Discovery, oh, by the way, uh, the uh, Pahala quakes don't have anyone reporting it as felt to the USGS. But the 3.2 in Mauna Loa, at a depth of uh, 3.5 kilometers, was felt by six people. As for the volcano discovery, it has it as a two out of five current state restless. We know that at the beginning of August, they changed it to a yellow code. It's a shield volcano. It's the biggest on-land volcano, as we know, in the world. It's 13,681 feet. The number of quakes it's had today are quite a lot. The 3.2 at a, de a depth of 3.5 kilometers. Again, a 2.6 at a magnitude today, again at a 3.8 kilometers. Again today, 2.5 at a 1.7 kilometers depth. Again today, magnitude 1.8 at a 1.8 kilometer depth. And again before that, a 2.3 at a 1.7 kilometer depth. So we see we have an earthquake swarm happening in Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is the world's largest and one of the its most active volcanoes. It's a giant shield volcano on the Big Island. The world's largest mountain and volcano. This is an accumulation of the earthquakes on the Big Island. As you can see, the ones on the bottom, the purple ones, are the deepest, and they're all in Pahala. Now, as far as Mauna Loa, the largest mountain and volcano, the archetype of a basaltic shield volcano, according to Volcano Discovery, in its late mature stage of life, and only about 600,000 to a million years old, Although it's not erupted as frequently as its younger neighbor, Kilauea, it's also one of the most active volcanoes in the world. And when it erupts, its eruptions are usually huge and produce large rivers of lava that have repeatedly threatened the town of Hilo. Mauna Loa rises almost nine kilometers above sea level floor, and the weight of this massive mountain has depressed the oceanic crust down by eight kilometers. So the whole pile of volcanic rocks produced from Mauna Loa is probably about 8 plus 5 plus 4 equals 17 kilometers. It has erupted both from its summit, occupied by a large caldera, and its northeast and southwest rift zones on the flanks. Almost 90% of Mauna Loa's surface is covered by lavas less than 4,000 years old, while about 50% of the surface is covered by lavas no older than 1,500 years old. Well, about 25% are covered by lava flows younger than about 750 years old, hence and placed after the formation of the Moka Weoweo Summit Caldera. Now, the recent Volcano Discovery Mauna Loa Weekly Report by Hawaii Volcano Observatory was dated December 19th, so it was before these quakes here, the swarm with 3.1 biggest. HVO reports that Mono oil volcano is not currently erupting. The deformation and seismicity rates have not changed substantially over the past week and remain above long-term background levels. Throughout the past week, HVO observed approximately 53 small magnitude quakes, nearly all smaller than two magnitudes. You can see the 3.1 in uh, not only the 3.1, but the swarms that we've had, which, are, which were uh, much higher today than the two. Um, the two magnitude that they had this past week did and they say this past report says that they detected beneath the upper elevations of volcano most of the earthquakes occurred at shallow depths of less than six kilometers that's four miles
below sea level. Now, we also had, of course, the Pahala earthquake. All of them are deep, uh, 37.1 kilometers. That's near the mantle plume. No one has reported that being felt. And uh, we know that that's obviously a part of the Kilauea area, the Kilauea volcano. We know that Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and the Loihi Seamount to the uh, south all share the same magma chamber. The chamber has three fingers, one pointing up vertically towards Mauna Loa, the other one at Kilauea, and the third one at Loihi Seamount. And they all share the same magma chamber. And this is it right here. This is a cross section, as you can see. The Pahala earthquakes very close to the mantle plume. Let's take a look at what's going on there with the quakes and the deformation lately. This is the area. As you can see, we've had over 460 quakes in the past 28 days. Most of them, as you can see, are right here. Pahala. Okay, these are today's quakes. Uh, as you can see, all of them are deep. Magnitude 2.2 happens to be at a 38 kilometer depth, 23 plus miles. That's just one example. Um, this is at 21.5 miles to magnitude. And, but the thing is that here, Mauna Loa, all right, we've had, this was yesterday at a 3.18. As you can see, we've had an increase of the size, not just swarms. And this is today. 3.15 at a 3.4, 2.1 kilometer uh, mile depth. So you can see this is Mauna Loa. They're pretty big. The deformation. Now let's go to the, uh, see if we get any deep, uh, GPS information. Uh, I want to see if we get some. No, that's not going to be very easy for us to see. Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. Okay, let's go here. Deformation. All right. The deformation from the GPS and tilt meters. They help monitor deformation of Kilauea. The, uh, this is the, the past um, two days. The past week. Summit, Kilauea Summit and East Rift Zone. And this is from January 2019, this year that is, up to now, these uh, 10, 8, 12 months. And this is right after what happened five years, what happened right after the eruption of Kilauea. And we can see that it's building up again. The incline is, of course, much higher, much greater than it is with, with, with the past eruption. And this is the global positioning for Pu'o'o. Changes in the distance between GPS stations located on opposite sides of Caldera and Kilauea. Rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or Pu'o'o magma storage chamber. Above Pu'o'o GPS change distance between the two stations. A rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or the Puo magma storage chamber. So it's uh, inflating, meaning it's uh, filling. It's, it's filling up, as we can see. All right, deformation page. The ground deformation, as we can see, this is what's happening. The years, what's happened here, it's sloughing off. And this is a very dangerous thing because if that sloughs off and cuts off, as you can see the arrows here showing us from GPS where this area is heading. This is heading towards the southeast. This is all, of course, from GPS. And if that cuts off, that's dangerous because it's going to create some kind of a, a tidal wave tsunami. Okay, this is what the tilt meters are showing. Kilauea summit. Deflation indicating downward tilt and inflation by upward tilt. 
Ground deformation measurements provide important indicator about what is happening beneath the volcano. As magma accumulates, it's happening now. In an underground reservoir before an eruption, the ground surface typically swells, namely inflating, as we see. The, as magma leaves the reservoir, potentially to erupt, the ground above the reservoir subsides, named deflation. Volca volcanoes also deform due to stresses that can result in movement on faults during earthquakes. And Hawaiian Volcano Observatory scientists have developed and tested many techniques for measuring volcano deformation. The resulting data used for better understanding uh, forecasting volcano activity, GPS, tilt, and INSAR satellite radar. GPS sites record ground motion in three dimensions, GPS, as we can see here, and that's the direction of where it's going, right here, and here as well, okay. As you can see, that's the area right here, These, the um, uh, east of, uh, southeast of Kilauea. INSAR provides a snapshot of volcano deformation. That's a caldera, that's Puoo. Deformation from air and space. The infraferometric aperture radar INSAR uses radar images of the ground that are collected by airplanes and orbiting satellites to make maps of ground deformation. Rate of change here, you can see that, that's really changing, right? And um, the group of Earth Observatory Observation Supersite identified Hawaii as a critical site for regular monitoring, so the satellites in SAR data are available for Kilauea and Mauna Loa volcanoes. Um, more than for any other volcano on Earth because the INSAR detects deformation over broad areas. On Mauna Loa, INSAR helps scientists detect subtle shifts in the deformation style of the volcano and starting in mid-2014, inflation began at the volcano summit and along its southwest rift zone. In late 2015, INSAR data showed inflation occurring only beneath the upper southwest rift zone, SWRZ, this change was apparent in GPS data, but the details of the shift were better observed with a broad view provided by INSAR. Okay, in March 2011, Kilauea's normal activity was interrupted by the 4.5 day long Kamoa Moa fissure eruption west of Puoo on the east rift zone here. Okay, and um, INSAR data from several satellites captured deflation of the summit and expansion of East Rift Zone, indicating that magma had drained from beneath the summit to feed the new eruptive fissure. Careful analysis of deformation allowed scientists at NASA and HVO to develop a model for the magma pathway below the ground. Now, of course, they don't know when it's going to erupt. It is filling up. Let's go to volcanic gases. They do measure this. We know that also they have the, um, there we go, uh, they also have the latest multimedia having to do with our with the water in the um, caldera. Sorry, photos and video chronology right there. Okay, this is the latest is December thirteen. Here they are measuring December twelfth. We see that. This is November 28th, December 12th. The lake, uh, the water uh, at the Kilauea Summit Lake has really increased. The large rock that was visible here at the end of Kilauea Summit Crater Lake on November 28th, marked by the white circle here, is now submerged. So I guess we could also take that little white rock there, there, right there. So you can see the water has basically gone up to that area right there. Yes? and um, is now submerged and the water level continues to slowly rise. The distance between the water surface and the tripod on the crater rim was measured at about 1,962 feet. Um, this is not, of course, you know, the uh, Hawaiians have legends of uh, their volcano crater craters filling with water and uh, that was just before explosive eruptions. Uh, we saw that happen in the White Island Volcano in New Zealand 
it was an unexpected eruption, even though they had quake swarms uh, weeks before. Uh, they did not expect the White Island volcano of the North Island of New Zealand to erupt. But erupted, they say, it was a hydrothermal eruption because water had entered the volcano and it superheated, the, the water turned into superheated steam and it had to explode to come out. And that's what happened, that's how the explosion occurred. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.